seems like a very long road to get to this point, but the Hampton Court Palace Flower Show is on. The garden is finished. This is the, if you remember, the tile which brings everything together. All of the regional shows, the designs for those all come together at this one point. And this is the starting point. This is why we started on this endeavor. This is, in a way, what so many communities face just dereliction, abandonment, uh, an area within houses, within an urban space where it just becomes a dumping ground. Uh, it's perhaps unknown as to who owns it or what it's used for, bad management, bad maintenance, whatever it is, but whatever the cause, this is so often what the end result is, just a complete mess, a very negative space. And it really highlights the importance of the groundwork slogan, the slogan of bleak grey areas breed bleak grey societies. Transformation from grey space to green space is a long-winded process and incredibly complex. One of the most challenging things is engaging with the community, drawing the members of the community out and allowing them to feel an integral part of that particular project, to, to really embrace the thoughts and ideas, the aims and aspirations of that community. And sometimes the way of doing it is to get an artist in, a mosaicist, but sometimes it's as simple as perhaps laying a meadow out and dropping a container, a converted shipping container like this in, and using it as a community focus point. It allows people to come together, to be drawn together over perhaps coffee mornings or just drop-ins with members of the local community and perhaps landscape architects from Groundworks and community liaison officers. It allows people to just loosen up a little bit, relax and start to understand that they can play an integral part in how their environment, their landscapes, their spaces can be shaped and morphed to create their particular aims. And this is a great example of what happens. The idea of just having a few boards around, some flip charts where people can scribble ideas, perform sketches. You don't have to be a great artist. It's more about the engagement and those raw ideas that groundwork landscape architects can then start to inject into the general process. So start of project is definitely here. The real spine of this design is the creation of what we refer to as negative space. That's the sort of street before the transformation. And there are shadowy suggestions of people being present. This young lady standing here, is she maybe touting for business? Or is she just enjoying the sunshine? You have to make your own mind up. Cyclists coming through. Are they causing trouble? Or are they just enjoying the openness of the street? A man sitting on a doorstep, happy or sad? You have to decide a boy walking a dog. The point here is that we wanted to create the impression of a monochromatic landscape, a space without the greenery. The chance is it goes down the negative route, but with a very simple flick of a switch, it can become incredibly positive. remarkable some of the responses which can start to generate this huge transformation. Sometimes they are very simple. It's where can I put my bins to prevent them being knocked over by the local children or perhaps raided by urban foxes. More often than not it's just the utilities. Where can I hang my washing with a sense of privacy? Very often, one of the primary ways in which a community can be activated, can be energised, is the concept of growing something that they can eat. We all consume food, we all enjoy eating. Many people enjoy cooking too. And so allowing them to grow in raised beds or perhaps 
in herb beds is a wonderful opportunity. And what you get very often is because there's a mix of communities, a mix of social and cultural backgrounds involved, you get the most diverse range of fruits, vegetables, herbs and flowers, from pomegranates through to things like the echinacea to make teas or monada to flavour drinks, loquats if you're interested in really exotic fruits, and of course, if you really want a good crop, you can grow standard grapevines. Another catalyst to engage communities and really start those conversations and the ideas flowing is the creation of a mosaic and one of the areas that Groundwork excel in is drawing communities out from behind those closed doors, from behind the fear of being in your own house and stepping outside. Suddenly give them the opportunity of maybe having a barbecue or a coffee morning or maybe a temporary creche people come out and they start to develop relationships, relationships that previously didn't exist or were underexploited. Creating mosaics, talking about how landscape and environment could change people's lives or perhaps what it is that people imagine and envisage when we talk about gardens and plants and landscapes. And this is a great example. This has been produced by a community right at the start of their groundwork project up in Solihull in Birmingham. And it's just an impression of perhaps some of the ideas that they have, some of the reminiscences that they have about gardens and landscapes. And from this, the full garden develops. And that's really what this space is about. It's a community garden, a garden in which the mum said, actually, it would be great to have some permanent seating where we can sit and chat and maybe eat out whilst the children play in a relatively enclosed and safe environment with sand pits and paddling pools, but also where there's beauty in flowers. Flowers that not only create great fragrance, but can be easily looked after and cut and taken into the house, making that essential link between inside and outside, and all done in one very compact and very simple community space. The opportunity is a great garden great, wonderfully diverse design responses. And this is the antithesis to the community garden on that side of the main street. This is perhaps a little bit more contemporary. It's inspired by some of the work that we saw down in South Wales, where the lads down there were building all sorts of timber products out of refuge, essentially. So bird boxes, bat boxes, benches, all sorts of things which can find a home in a garden and increase biodiversity. And that's the real reason behind this garden. It's about celebrating biodiversity and sustainability, not just in the products that are put into the garden, but also in the very planting itself. So for instance, on this side, we're suggesting more shady, more moist conditions in the soil because of the plant selection. Whereas over here, this is hot, dry, and steamy soil. And we've also developed a range of flowers within these borders wonderful diversity within the floral structure, which means that inevitably you get a wonderful diversity in the pollinating insects. From the bees, the long-tongued bees, which go into the digitalis here, to butterflies and hoverflies, which go on to the achilles. And then there's a, an extra layer, an extra veneer, which helps to just gently inform people about the way that plants survive. There are plants here with fragrant foliage, hairy leaves, succulent leaves, grey foliage, perhaps reduced foliage like the grasses. All of these things are mechanisms that plants have evolved in order to be able to thrive in really hostile environments. All of that doesn't necessarily take away from your enjoyment of the garden, but if you have the seed of enthusiasm sown as a result of this community project, there's plenty to be learned here. Responding not only to the community but also to the context within which they live is vitally important for the success of the project. And this is an example of what can happen if you have perhaps damp soils and one or two mature trees around. In this case, they're pioneer species, those trees which sometimes are considered to be weed species, which infiltrate redundant and derelict areas. Don't cut them all down 
work with them, create little havens within which children's imagination can be fired. This woodland garden not only has a real plethora of tree species with herbaceous understory and little networks of paths that lead to secret seating areas. But at the far end, it also has a wonderful wildlife pond, an area where instead of being afraid of the water, children can get used to being in respect of the water. They can dip in the water, watch the wee beasties that reside in those sorts of habitats. And plenty of opportunity for making toy boats and beaching them amongst the plants. The final piece of this rather complex landscape jigsaw is here. It's the community orchard and meadows. Increasing biodiversity by using a range of native wild flowers, which are the natural understory to a range of trees that all produce fruits that can be consumed, whether it's medlars or whether it's nuts from the hazels here, or sweet chestnuts, damsons, pears or apples. There's something for everyone to pick almost at every time of the year. But these are robust places. These are places in which children can really, well, be children. Opportunities for play, for just sitting in the grass, being amongst the environment and enjoying the green space with a decorative fence around the outside for that added feeling of security without there being a solid barrier preventing views in. It's not about creating exclusivity, in fact it's exactly the opposite. The point of this pro project is that everybody can be included and everyone has really a duty to say well what can I contribute to this tapestry in creating green landscapes? What role can I play? If we all ask ourselves that question and deliver on it, then for sure we're going to have much better green spaces.